So welcome everyone to DEQ's Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program Training for Natural Gas Suppliers. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Matt Steele and I am the Natural Gas Sector Specialist in the Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program. Also on with us today, we have Elizabeth Elbell, who is the Greenhouse Gas Reporting Lead, as well as other DEQ staff members who've been working on the new Your DEQ Online Reporting System. DEQ's Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program began collecting data in 2010 and collects data from natural gas suppliers, fuel suppliers, electricity suppliers, and stationary sources. This information is used to create the sector-based greenhouse gas inventory for Oregon and to inform policy decisions. During today's training, we will review the greenhouse gas reporting requirements for natural gas suppliers, look at changes to reporting for this year, and walk through the new Your DEQ Online system that will now be used for all reporting. If you have questions as we go through the training, um, please feel free to ask those in the chat and I'll try to keep an eye on that. You can also use the raise hand function and I'll have you unmute yourself to ask your question. A recording of this presentation, along with the slides, will be made available on our Greenhouse Gas Reporting Training webpage. So to start, we're gonna go over what the reporting requirements are. So the greenhouse gas uh, reporting for natural gas suppliers covers emissions from all natural gas supplied in Oregon and entities must report the total volume of natural gas delivered within the state, except where that gas is delivered to another natural gas supplier, such as a local distribution company. The greenhouse gas emissions are calculated by DEQ using quantification methodologies in Title 40, Part 98 of the Code of Federal Regulations. We generally use default values for things like higher heating values and the emission factors for different greenhouse gases, um, but you can also use developed values if you choose. Um, if you do, DEQ may request the data used to calculate those reporter specific values as part of our auditing process. You're required to report the volume of natural gas delivered to each end user that receives at least 460 million cubic feet of natural gas annually and identifying information for these facilities. One small addition this year is we are also asking you to include the DEQ source ID, which is the same as the permit number for these facilities. Um, DEQ will provide each of you with a list of facility source IDs based on your past reporting um, that you can put into the new reports. And if the source ID isn't known, you can also report it as unknown um, for the first time. Importantly, the reporting deadline for this year has been extended to July 16th. This change only applies this year and we will return to the normal March 31st deadline for future reporting years. So we'll move on now to highlight some of the new data elements that must be reported starting this year. So first, you're now required to report the volume of natural gas transported on your system for each natural gas marketer and we require contact information for each of these marketers, as well as the volume um, for each marketer. We also now require that any biomethane that you purchase and deliver um, to a location in Oregon uh, to be reported as a separate total volume. You're also required to provide the volume of biomethane purchased from each vendor and contact information for the vendor. Third-party verification is not required for your 2020 data, but will be required for 2021 data that you report next year. I won't be going over these rules in today's training, but if you have any questions about this requirement, please don't hesitate to contact me. The Climate Production Program is still under development, and I encourage you to follow that public rulemaking process for additional details on that program. So I'll pause here to see if there's any questions about the new reporting requirements for this year. Looks good. So now I'd like to walk through a brief introduction to the Your DEQ online system that you'll be using for reporting. Your DEQ online is an environmental data management system designed to combine current DEQ processes across the air, land, and water divisions into one convenient and easily accessible online portal. The system enables users to submit applications, upload reports, enter data, check the status of applications, 
pay fees and fines, and manage their own account activity. In addition, the system allows for greater public access to environmental data without the need to request this information from DEQ staff. The transition to your DEQ online will take place over the next several years, and you're one of the first groups to begin using the system. Because of that, we do appreciate any feedback that you have for us um, as you submit your reports this year. There are three types of accounts available in your DEQ online, and the two that can be used for greenhouse gas reporting are the responsible official and consultant accounts. A responsible official, or RO, is an individual at your company who will be responsible for signing and submitting the report to DEQ. This, this corresponds to the designated representative that is referenced in the greenhouse gas reporting rules. A consultant may be a little bit of a misnomer here, um, but this would be any individual who would be entering data into the greenhouse gas report, but not responsible for signing and certifying the data. And this might be a consultant you've hired to assist with your reporting, or more likely, um, this will be an individual within your company who's responsible for gathering and entering that data for the report. If you have multiple people um, with RO accounts at your company for different reporting to DEQ, um, they can all enter uh, data into the same report as well, and the RO that actually signs to certify the accuracy of the data and submits the report to DEQ will be considered the RO for the report. So when creating your account, you'll be required to create both a password and a PIN. Now the password is just used for logging into your account and the PIN will be required by the RO who is certifying and submitting that report to DEQ. So do keep both of these handy. When you log into the system, you'll be taken to the dashboard. Um, the dashboard is going to provide you a summary of all the data that you need um, to complete your reporting requirements. Any new greenhouse gas reporting obligations that require a submittal will be shown here in the upcoming obligations section. You can navigate to other pages using the navigation panel on the left hand side. And the navigation panel can be expanded. If you created an RO account, you'll see this pop up notifying you of the need to verify your identity when you first log in. Because ROs can digitally certify reports from their account, DEQ requires that they verify their identity before receiving full access to the system. You can navigate to the verification page using the go to my account button shown here, or by navigating to the my account section from the navigation panel. Under the my account options, you'll see a verification tab um, along the top, and you'll see two options available to verify your identity. Option one, the e-verify function is still under development. So to verify your identity right now, you'll need to use option two on this page, the electronic signature agreement. Print and complete the form using the button there, and then mail a signed copy to the DEQ head office in Portland. You can also email a copy to us so that we can approve you more quickly in the system. Facilities and companies already exist within the system, and you don't need to create them for yourselves. But you do need to be linked to your facility in order to see and complete reports. Only an RO account can, delect, can directly link to a facility. Consultants must be linked by the RO, and I'll show you how to do that in a few slides. To link to a facility, open the My Account, uh, the Account Type tab, sorry, under the My Account section, and you want to make sure that you have the greenhouse gas reporting a box checked under the submittal group as shown here. To open up the facility list, click on the bottom highlighted there on the bottom right. You can search for your facility in the drop down list that appears and select it there. Make sure that you're saving after making any changes into the system using that save icon shown here at the bottom right. Your company may have multiple facilities in your DQ online system. So if you have any questions about which facility is the correct option for your greenhouse gas reporting, um, please feel free to ask us. We'll also try to make sure that the initial facility link that you have is correct. Uh, I've got a question here from Jana. Uh, can we submit an ESA using DocuSign or does it need to be a signature? 
It does need to be a wet signature right now that you're gonna to mail to the DQ headquarters. Um, like I said, you can send us a, a scanned copy of that so that we can get you approved right now. Um, we do ask that you mail it in quickly. If it takes more than a week, you might lose your verification privileges in the system. So once you've completed the identity verification step, um, you, be you can begin linking facilities. Um, if you have linked a facility before being verified, um, you're gonna see this warning sign on the right-hand side of the top image here. Um, you'll, if that happens, you're gonna need to unlink the facility and then relink until you get a successful linkage, which will be shown with that green thumbs up icon that you see in the bottom image. So consultant accounts are users who can see the reporting obligations and enter information into reports. However, they cannot link themselves to a facility and cannot certify and submit a report. So a responsible official can designate consultants to provide access to any or all of the reporting obligations that the RO is linked to. To do this, navigate to the consultants tab under the my accounts section, search the consultants by email address, and then click that link button on the right hand side shown here. Once you've linked them, you'll see um, them show up in a box at the top of your screen, and you need to click on that box to expand the selection so that you can add permissions to the consultant. Um, note that if you don't add any permissions to the consultant before navigating away from the screen, the consultant will not remain linked to your account. So to add the link, um, you need to add this new permission at the bottom here by selecting the facility and type of report that you would like them to be able to access. You can add multiple facilities and types of reporting to one consultant um, if desired. You'll be able to begin your reporting once it appears under the upcoming obligations section on your dashboard, which will occur when DEQ publishes the reporting obligation for the year. We'll be trying to do this as near to the beginning of the year um, as we can and provide you with as much time as possible to submit reports. The reporting for this year will be made available tomorrow. So if you've already set up your account and linked to your facility, but you don't see the report available in your dashboard, that is why. So when the reporting obligation is created by DEQ staff, it will appear in the upcoming obligations section on your dashboard. The first RO account linked to your facility will also receive an email notifying them that there is a new reporting obligation. Each report will show a unique report number, details on your facility, the reporting type, uh, the reporting period for the data, and the due date for submitting the completed report. To begin the report, click the blue pencil icon shown here on the right side. The Natural Gas Supplier Annual Report has seven different tabs to complete, and you can navigate between the tabs by clicking um, on each tab at the top of your screen. First is the basic info tab. And the basic info tab will autofill with the reporting year, your facility name, and the information of the RO who's opening the report. This information cannot be edited. You'll also be asked to put contact information in for your greenhouse gas reporting. You can enter different contact information here if it's a different person than the responsible official. And if it's the same individual, you can click the box at the top here to bring all the information down automatically. The second tab is the natural gas supplier tab. This tab has two sections. The first section allows you to enter the total volume of natural gas delivered within Oregon during the reporting year. You must add at least one record here. And the second section at the bottom here should be used to enter any biomethane volumes that you purchased and delivered. Note that this only applies to gas that you owned, not gas that you're just transporting. So for the first section, if you click the new button here, it will show this screen. Under each entry, you'll need to enter whether the natural gas was produced in state, imported, or delivered by a local distribution company. Next, you'll need to enter the type of natural gas being delivered, which will mainly be the natural gas option here um, in the list. But if you do purchase and deliver any biomethane, 
um, or you're bringing any um, liquid na liquefied natural gas by truck, that needs to be included here under a separate entry. Next, enter the total volume of this type of natural gas that was delivered during the year. You can also choose whether to use default values for the higher heating value and emission factors or select reporter specific values here um, and enter your development values. If you choose default values, that value will be filled in for you. Continue to select default or reporter specific emission factors for each measured greenhouse gas. Once all of the required data is entered, the system will automatically calculate the greenhouse gas emissions as tons of CO2 equivalent at the bottom. And we've got a question about the values of whether we're using EPA default values. And yes, our emissions factors um, and higher heating values come from the federal regulations, same as the EPA is using. Again, do make sure that you're saving after you're entering your data so you're not losing um, things that you've entered. Once you've done that, the entry will condense and will only show the type of natural gas and the total emissions of that type. You can aggregate all of your um, emissions that are the same for each type and uh, import or local, local distribution company um, delivery type. And you can add new records if you also need to report other natural gas types or sources. If you have purchased and delivered biomethane, you must also enter information on the vendor of the biomethane. So use this new button under this section to create a new entry for each vendor of biomethane that you purchase gas from during the reporting year. Under that entry, you'll need to enter all of the required information here for each vendor of biomethane, including the contact information and the volume of gas purchased. The third tab is the large end user and marketer tab. You are required to report the volume of gas delivered to each large end user, um, which as I said, is an end user receiving at least 460 million cubic feet of natural gas during the year, and also customer information for these users. You also need to supply identifying information of any natural gas marketers who have made use of your distribution system. So to add a new large end user, you click the yellow new button under that section, and that will open up this new entry for you, where you can input the required data for the customer facility, including the customer name and address, the DEQ source ID, and the volume of gas delivered in the reporting year. Again, if the DEQ source ID for the end user is not known, you can write unknown as shown here into that field. Repeat this process for each large end user um, that you've delivered more than the 460 million cubic feet of gas in the year for. And another question, does biomethane have to be delivered in Oregon or can it be purchased on the market and delivered via displacement on the system? Yeah, it can be purchased outside of Oregon. You have to report it if it's delivered within Oregon. Does that answer your question? You can unmute yourself, I think, Andy. Yeah, Matt, um, it's sort of, I guess, uh, you know, the semantics of it, I, I'm really after, you know, if we were to buy or have a customer that wanted to buy biomethane somewhere else, they wouldn't physically get the biomethane molecules delivered to them. But, you know, we wouldn't have to buy that volume of gas uh, because we're buying that gas from somewhere else. And so via displacement, they would be paying for biomethane, but not technically getting biomethane. Right, in that case, that's what you'd need to report. It's not the exact natural gas being delivered, that biomethane, but it's that displacement on the system that we want to essentially know about. So that purchase record is what we're really after. Okay, good, that's good to know. Thanks, Thanks. So similarly, you need to add information on each marketer who has used your distribution system in the reporting year by adding records using the new button under the marketing info section. Um, and you need to add the contact information of the marketing company here and the volume of gas transported during the reporting year.
The fourth tab is for attachments. There's no standard required attachment for the natural gas supplier reports. However, if you have additional supporting documentation to upload for your report, um, such as a biomethane purchase report or supporting documentation for reporter specific emission factors, those documents can be added on this tab. The fifth tab is a payment tab. No payments required when submitting a natural gas supply report, and this tab will show no required fees. The reason that tabs like this exist is because we're going to be using this system for all of DEQ's processes and some other reporting types do have fees. On the review tab, you can see a summary of your submittal, including a confirmation that all of the required sections have been completed. You can also click the PDF icon here to open a summary report of your submission which can be used to review your submission for accuracy or saved for your records. The final tab is the submission tab. This tab is used to submit your completed and reviewed report. Note that only an RO can complete a submission for their facility. They need to read and accept the certification statement here to certify the report. You will then be required to answer a security question and enter your PIN to confirm your identity as the RO and submit the report by clicking the blue submit button at the bottom of the page. You'll, well, you'll, sorry, you'll receive a confirmation message that your report has been successfully submitted and you will also receive a confirmation email um, with your submission number for reference. Once your report is submitted, you can view all of your completed submittals by navigating to the track submittal status page on the navigation panel, or you can view the submittals on your dashboard um, by toggling to the submitted side of my submittals. From either area, you can click on the eye icon that's highlighted there to track the submittal status. So on the submittal summary tab, you'll see the current status of your submission on the right-hand side of the page under review flow. And immediately after your successful submission, this will only show the first step there, the data review step. This indicates that the greenhouse gas reporting staff are in the process of reviewing your submittal. As your submission moves through data review stages, this will be reflected in the review flow section of the submittal until the report is accepted. You may only see some of these steps that are shown here displayed depending on the review process that we take. You receive an email from DEQ online when the report has been accepted by DEQ. If any changes need to be made um, based on items that we flagged during our audit process or anything that you realize after you've submitted the report, this is also where you'll go to request a revision. So that's the end of the material for today's training. I'd like to open it up now for any final questions. And if you do have any additional questions um, after we're done with the training today, you can always contact me um, at the GHG report email account. We do also have additional guidance documents um, on the greenhouse gas reporting website that's linked here. Um, and if you have any questions about the URDQ online system, you can contact the URDQ online help desk. Hey, Matt. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the one question I do have, um, hopefully this would be the only year since we're not doing third party verification this year, but what's, what's your plan for handling, uh, since we're using the EPA data that we get requests back from EPA that there's corrections to be made and we make those corrections. Um, what do we have to add, do we, I'm assuming we're gonna, you know, we would want to update our data for you as well. If there was a data update, um, we would have to go in and request a revision to that year's uh, data submittal. Is that, is that, am I understanding that correctly? I just wanna understand your question here, make sure that I'm understanding your question here correctly, Andy. So you're just asking how you'll update data if you find mistakes have been made once you get your EPA review back? Yeah, yeah, because the EPA review is usually, well, this year it's third, like a year behind because they didn't do anything. I'm just now getting questions about 2019. Um, so, you know, that kind of stuff, 
going forward, how are we going to handle that? And then um, in the event that you guys find something or vice versa, they find something that's in that and they don't jive, how, how are we going to resolve those sorts of discrepancies between data issues that they possibly find and data issues that you possibly find or vice versa? Sure, that's a great question. Um, so if you realize after you submitted a report that um, the mistake's been made, something was entered incorrectly or something like that, or you get um, questions back from EPA um, that are requiring you to make changes, um, and you think that what you've submitted to DEQ is no longer considered accurate, um, you can contact us um, at the GCT report email to let us know, and you can submit as a, a revision request through the system um, back on your um, tracking middle page here. Um, so in here, you would just choose the revision option and you put in the reason for documentation of why you want to re revise your report and then send that. And similarly, this is the same option that's going to be used if we find something during our auditing process, we'll ask you to go into the system here um, and request the revision from us. It needs to be this way so that the documentation is retained in the system. And then what if there's discrepancy between let, let's say, for instance, that you guys notice something and we want to make changes, but then I, you know, since I'm going to want to have the same reports for both Oregon and, and EPA, I go in and make those same changes for EPA and they kick me back with something else that's in, you know, there's a discrepancy between what you guys are seeing, what they're seeing. What, is there something in place that you guys have thought of that would help us work through that so that we're not having two sets of, of reporting data out to the public. Sure. Well, I mean, I think we're going to want the same data reported to both us and the EPA. I'm trying to imagine a situation where you'd end up providing different numbers to us for what you would consider both to be correct. Um, so I, I yeah, I don't anticipate it would happen, but I'm just, you know, playing devil's advocate here in, in a situation where you guys notice something that was different that needed to be changed, but then it kicks out, kicks me another thing issue with the EPA, you know, six months down the road, because I'm, I'm anticipating you guys are going to be quicker at reviewing this than, than they are. And, you know, we'll be making changes probably based on your comments first resubmitting to the EPA, and then they're going to be reviewing it six months down the road after that coming back with issues and there may be discrepancies between what you guys have caught at asking us to make changes versus what they see and it could put us in a situation where we're going back and forth over the same set of numbers and where to put them in a bucket I saw Elizabeth yeah yonder. and I, I just want to be really clear that when you guys have a reporting obligation to DEQ, it has to comply with Division 215, so the state reporting requirements. Um, and if for some reason those deviated in some way, which I think for this sector in particular, it, 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 in terms of emissions calculations, they're very closely aligned with EPA, then our requirements would apply for your DEQ report and the EPA requirements would apply for their report. Um, and so I, I wanna make sure that that's clear in terms of, of how you should be looking at your reporting obligations. Um, I think that if we were get to a, getting to a point where we had some concerns about methodology, which is really where we align with EPA, and there was something where we uh, disagreed or had some concerns about it, we would probably work directly with you and EPA to figure out exactly how to navigate those specific issues. And sometimes that does come up with, with other sectors where we do need to make sure that we're all communicating and, and get into the details of things. But I just want that, to be, be That's clear. good to know. I just, I don't anticipate it happening, but that, that doesn't mean that it won't. And it's going to be a one-off thing that we, I think we need to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody's getting the same information and the data that's out there. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Amy. I just had an additional question, but I'll ask it. I'll ask it after you're done. Oh, I, I just wanted to also let you guys know that we do work closely with EPA staff and have existing relationships with them. So we um, have established communication on this and other topics. So 
um, it wouldn't be kind of trying to establish new communication methods or anything like that. So there, there's an existing relationship to work through some of these things. Yeah, that's good to know. Uh, the other thing, and it's not really a question probably pertaining to this specifically, but when, when the, um, carbon or the climate protection program goes into place and there's going to be monetary impacts associated with these emissions, um, what, or I'm sure there's people looking into this, but there's going to need to be some sort of mechanism for truing up errors in these, say, you guys find something that, you know, either underreported, overreported, so that those, those monetary impacts are trued up, whether we, you know, somebody's having to pay more for emissions or getting some money back from the program uh, when those errors do occur. Yeah, and I, I just to add to that, I would say that um, in regards to compliance with those rules, um, you're going to have to refer to to the rules that they eventually adopt and that I imagine that they will have some provisions that cover that situation that you described. I think with any kind of market-based program, there are, you know, the ability to kind of um, manage that, those types of situations, because we all know in the real world, there are corrections that need to occur and things like that. But yeah. um, for our reporting program, so under Division 215, you know, we rely on, on those specific rules in terms of reporting data and correcting those uh, data sets as needed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, well, I don't see any other questions there. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Um, if you do have any questions, like I said, feel free to contact me at the GHG report email. One more quick, will the slides be available? I'm hoping the slides will be available next week as well as the recording, and I can send out a link when they are. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.